Hello and welcome back to the Highline Guitars channel. In today's episode, I'm gonna talk about providing power to a CNC machine because how you power the machine can have a critical impact not only on how the machine performs, but it also goes back to the decision you make about the machine you're gonna purchase. So let me explain. A CNC machine would seem like a similar tool to like a bandsaw or a drill press or a planer or a joiner. You just plug it into the wall and you go. Well, as you increase the size of any kind of woodworking tool, whether it's one of those traditional machines or a CNC machine, the power requirements become a little bit more complicated. And in the case of a CNC machine, interference can play a critical role in how well the machine performs. Any sort of electrical interference, and that can come from other machines that are on the same circuit or an improperly grounded light fixture, can cause problems with the electrical signal that the drivers are sending out to the stepper motors. And that's one of the reasons why a CNC machine can suddenly lose steps or uh, lose its positioning. And to prevent that, you know, everything in the shop has to be properly grounded, first of all. But more importantly, how you provide power to the machine becomes increasingly important as the machine gets larger. Now, when I had my original X-Carve, I kind of discovered this issue because I noticed that uh, interference could cause problems with missteps. So I had to take precautions. I had to make sure that all my lights were grounded properly. I had to make sure that the cabling that supplies the signal from my computer to the, uh, to the controller and then from the controller out to the steppers were all ice, or, uh, shielded and grounded properly. And once I did that, everything seemed to be okay. And I followed those same steps when I design and built my previous CNC machine. And that, you know, seemed to work pretty well. When I got the big X-Carve Pro, I knew that all the cabling was shielded and grounded, so that wasn't gonna be an issue. And Inventables told me that as long as I was plugging into a 110 outlet, I should be good to go. That would be enough for the spindle. However, as I was doing some test cuts, I ran into some uh, problems with some missteps and uh, the machine going off of the tool path unexpectedly. And what I discovered was the outlet that I had the machine plugged into in my garage space also happened to be on the same circuit as my house's furnace. So whenever the furnace kicked in, that meant there was a fluctuation in the voltage being provided, which caused a problem with the machine. So what I've had to do is I've had to rewire my garage with a new outlet that's connected to a circuit that has nothing else on it. So that's ideally what you wanna do as you step up in, to bigger and more powerful machines is you really need to have it plugged into an outlet that is on its own circuit. Now, when you start getting into some of the really big machines, you're gonna to have to have it wired into its own circuit anyway. And you'll notice as you go from like a 1.5 kilowatt spindle to the 2.2 kilowatt spindle, you have to go from a 110 power source, and this is here in the United States, to a 220 volt uh, power source. And regardless of which one you have to use, ideally you want that machine to be the only device on that circuit. Anything else that might be sharing the circuit could cause fluctuations in the power. Now that's in an ideal scenario. And realistically, if you're in a home-based workshop like I am, you're going to be wired into a circuit that may have other items uh, connected to that circuit. So what you have to do is make sure that nothing else is running when you're running the CNC machine. And as luck would have it, on the other side of my shop wall is my living room. And I've got uh, my uh, outlet 
as part of that circuit, but there's nothing else plugged into it. There's a TV and a, and a home theater system that's connected to it, but during the day, that stuff isn't running. So it's not drawing power on the level that might interfere with this machine. So I'm good to go with that. But if you're thinking about stepping up to a, a really big machine, you know, with a you know, three to five horsepower spindle, you're gonna have to have a completely different power source than what you would typically find in most suburban homes. So you'll have to contract with a uh, electrician to come in and wire the machine to run. And another issue that is important to consider with these type of machines is the variable frequency drive that controls the spindle doesn't like to run off of a GFCI type outlet. And I think in the United States, most houses built after 2008, all the garages and any outlets that are in a garage or outside uh, are GFCI outlets. And you can't run it with that. If you're gonna run the CNC machine, you're gonna have to have a separate circuit run into the uh, to your workspace that is a non-GFCI outlet to power the machine because with a variable frequency drive, it has a tendency to send some of its voltage to ground and that can cause a GFCI outlet to trip. So you're in the, be in the middle of a carve and all of a sudden everything would shut down. So before you pull the trigger on a CNC machine that has NEMA 34 stepper motors and a 2.2 kilowatt spindle or even more powerful than that, the first thing you need to do is consider whether or not you need a machine of that size for the type of projects you're gonna use. And one way to determine that is to consider the bits that you're gonna be pushing with that machine. Having that kind of power is overkill if all you're ever gonna be doing is cutting with a quarter inch diameter or smaller bits. I mean, think about it. If you're cutting fret slots with a bit that's 23 thousandths of an inch in diameter, do you really need five horsepower spindle? Of course not. But you also, once you've made that uh, decision about the size of the machine, that you're gonna purchase is you need to consider how you're gonna power it. Do you have a circuit in your garage or workspace that you can dedicate to the CNC machine while it's operating? And you gotta make sure that you're not sharing that circuit with any other appliances. You know, For example, you can't be connecting your dust collector and your computer to the same circuit that you're running your CNC machine on. It, it could cause some issues. It's better to run the CNC machine on its own circuit and then plug your other components into another circuit. So. Uh, just some food for thought, and I hope this video was useful for those of you who are thinking about taking the CNC plunge. If so, please give me a thumbs up. It always helps. If you want to show my channel some support, head over to eGuitarPlants.com, purchase one of the plants there. Even if you're not going to build it, that small amount of money you spend goes a long way to helping this channel continue. And if you don't want to plan, uh, I've got some merch. You know, uh, hopefully you can see the merch. Uh, shelf down below. If not, I'll provide a link in the description below and you can go and purchase one of the few t-shirts that I offer for sale. So uh, until the next episode, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.